On tonight's episode, there will be drama, a meltdown, and I'll be no rabbit too. This giant hot chocolate can required way more wax than I usually melt in one go, so my usual melting pot was not going to cut it. This time I added the brown colouring while the wax was melting. I used chocolate orange fragrance oil, which I measured out in one of the cute beakers from the set I've recently got. My scales weren't picking up the small amounts of oils I usually use, so this was my solution. As always, I added this when the wax was about 57 Celsius and I made sure that it was mixed in properly. Because this was a huge jar and my wicks are not very good quality, I decided to make this a double wick candle. Once the jar was prepared, it was time to pour in the wax, and I even caught the setting on tape, so enjoy! I had some extra wax at the end, which I poured into an ice cube tray, thinking it would be good for chocolate sprinkles on top. Next I moved on to making the marshmallows on top. I weighed out the wax and fragrance oil, melted the wax on a double boiler and mixed in the fragrance oil. Then this ended up in the ice cube tray too. Once these were set, I cut each cube into about 8 pieces. I didn't worry too much about creating equal sizes, as we all know, white marshmallows come in all shapes and sizes. As you can see, the cuts were quite rough on the edges, not really marshmallowy. This was easily fixable though, by rubbing them on a piece of kitchen paper to get the rounded edges. And this is how they turned out. Let me show you how the hot chocolate looked like after solidifying. As you can see, there's some frosting. It's annoying, but almost inevitable for soy wax candles at winter. I wasn't worried about the top as that is going to get covered by marshmallows and the frosting on the side kind of worked with the hot chocolate design. I matted the top layer of the candle with a hair dryer. It's a good life hack if you, like me, don't have a heat gun. Not sure why I took off the wick holder before this step though. The heat melted the wicks and they made a mess on the side of the jar. Please learn from my mistake. Then came the fun part of placing the marshmallows on top. I played with this until I was happy with how it looked, which was way longer than the same person would have. But when I was satisfied, I melted the top just enough so the chocolate sprinkles would stick to it. I used a big hole grater to have bigger chunks. When I was taking this candle to show it to my husband, he thought I actually made him a cup of hot chocolate. Now that is a success in my book. This candle started the same way as always. I measured out the wax, melted it on a double boiler and added the colouring and fragrance oil. As the first hot chocolate candle turned out to be a bit frosted, I tried out a few hacks I heard could help. I warmed up the glass before pouring in the wax and I poured at a very low temperature, about 40 Celsius. I was feeling very optimistic when I watched it set. Then this is how it looked on the next day. This was more than I could get away with claiming this goes with the design. So it was time to try out another hack that could help with the frost bottle. My good old hairdryer to the rescue again. I melted the outside of the candle, making sure I was applying the heat evenly. It was fun to watch the bubbles come to the surface. I 
I had to repeat this process about five times to get to this result. It's far from perfect, but I decided it can pass as a milky hot chocolate design. Moving on to the part that I was most excited about. I really wanted to try out whipping wax and what's a better opportunity than putting whipped cream on a hot chocolate candle. I melted the wax and added the fragrance oil. Then using an electric mixer I started whipping. I wasn't quite sure how long to whip it for but it seemed like a safe stopping point when it didn't fall off from the spoon. I spooned it into my piping bag Dreading the time when I have to clean these equipment off. Please, please let me know in the comments how you clean wax off of your equipment. Anyway, once all wax was secured in the piping bag, I popped it around the wick. Let me show you a close up of how this turned out. I had some wax left in the bag, which I couldn't let go to waste, so I piped a few more blocks on a piece of baking paper. I'm sure I will find a use for these later, I just have to remember not to eat them. And all that's left is the finishing touch, adding the chocolate sauce. I used gel wax for this in the hope that it would create a better saucy consistency than a runny soy wax. I think my bet paid off and the gel wax created a super realistic chocolate sauce. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, why not watch another one? Or even better, subscribe so you never miss out.